this trench run diorama I'm going to be using a couple of these X-Wing kits from Bandai, 144 scale. You've got stickers and generic sprues, a stand in there which we're not going to use. Um, along with those two kits I've got another X-Wing from um, the other box that I picked up which is this Death Star attack set comes with an X-Wing and um, some Death Star tiles. I'm planning on expanding this. Uh, I'm gonna make a couple of molds and make some extra tiles. Also along with that I've got some color charts from the Death Star attack set. Not completely accurate but you know it's fairly useful if you want to go by those. I also found these on the internet. So we've got Red 5, Red 2 and Red 3. Again colors not 100% accurate but good for the placement of the colored panels. And here you can see I've got Biggs painted up already, red free. And uh, yeah, so for the accurate colours, you may as well just go on the internet and have a look for some more reference material. So to start off with, I'm going to be using these tiny little micro LEDs for the engine lights. I try to use fiber optics but they were just too bulky to run through the um, engines so I decided to use micro LEDs with also some translucent red plastic in order to give us that red effect. Uh, it came out looking pink because I used cool white LEDs but you know what um, they match the film pretty damn well so I think that's probably what ILM did in the first place with cool white LEDs and uh, red plastic. So you can see here we've got the engine and on the wing, uh, we're going to run the LED wires through and out of this part of the engine and it's going to go into the body of the X-Wing. So if you uh, prise those two parts apart, you can see that it, they're quite clustered with um, sort of keys to keep them in place and that's fine if you're building the model but we need to remove those. So I'm going to cut a channel and um, just to warn you, don't cut towards yourself. Um, I'm quite comfortable using a craft knife, but it is a really stupid thing to do. Um, so, you know, be careful if you're cutting these tabs off. They are quite hard plastic. If you are doing something like I'm doing, which you shouldn't be doing, uh, do it carefully, slowly, make sure you've got a really sharp blade. So once those tabs are removed, we're going to use a round file to start removing the rest of the material inside those engine nozzles. Now I tried drilling um, with pin vise, but unfortunately because the plastic is so thin it started to bend and warp it as I was drilling. So my advice is just use a file to hollow out that um, chamber there. Okay, so once we've got those hollowed out we're going to do a test fit and make sure it all still fits together. So you can see on the model I've already done, there is a tiny little hole in the side of the engine which leads into the body and that is where the wire is going to go through. So what I'm doing here just to get ready is to um, glue the micro LED to that translucent red plastic um, in order to create our bulb essentially. It's fiddly work but uh, you get there in the end and again doing a test fit just making sure it all fits together and that channel is wide enough for that plastic. Once that's done uh, you're going to need to paint the inside of the engines black and that's for a uh, light blocking. With the Biggs model I didn't do this and so I had to put on quite a few layers of paint on the outside of the engine and that softened um, some of the detail. So for these next two, Wedge and Luke, I painted the inside black, which pretty much eliminated the majority of the light shining through. And once those are painted black, just get a dab of super glue in there and put the LED into place. First, you might find that you need a tool in order to uh, keep it in place without gluing yourself to the engine. 
Um, don't use a file, uh, it was the first thing I grabbed, but you probably don't want to clog up your file with super glue. So maybe use tweezers, like the ones that I've got on the mat, which I just decided to ignore for some reason. And so one side is done, we'll glue up the other side and make sure that wire is running through the correct part of the engine, through that hole so we don't pinch those wires and potentially break them in the future. They are very delicate. Okay, so here you can see we've got the wire running through the engine, it's going to go into the body and down past the wings through a hole in the bottom of the model. And there are all four of them wired up, ready to go. The wing's still open, you still got mobility, I am going to glue them in place though, as we can see here. So this is the full uh, kit built, it's really simple, really easy to do. If you weren't doing these LEDs, you would um, be able to build this in like four minutes. And those are the LEDs, I think they came out really nice and I think all three X-Wings with those lit are gonna look awesome. So, two X-Wings built, ready to go, and ready to start the paint process. Okay, so to start we're going to go with a uh, Tamiya um, grey primer. It's just quite a nice neutral colour to start with and I'm doing this through my airbrush. However, you could very easily paint it on if you haven't got an airbrush or even get a can of grey primer. Um, my advice is just to go easy on it though. You don't want to clog up any of the fine detail on these models because since it's so small, it's uh, quite easy to lose it. Okay, and so once we've got the primer done, we're going to go with some pre-shading. Now really on a model this small, this is not particularly necessary, however I wanted to try it out. And so what I'm doing is I'm just spraying a very thin uh, layer of black paint into the recesses. And so it goes on so thinly that um, to start with it doesn't really add much shade. But if you keep going back and um, progressively putting more and more layers on, eventually you have some nice shading on the panels and in the recesses. This is definitely a technique um, I would use on larger models, but for this purpose, we uh, we just thought it might be um, an interesting uh, experiment as to whether it actually shows up in the uh, final layer of the colours. Definitely shows up after the um, initial white coat, but after all the weathering and uh, panel shading, it's debatable whether it actually does anything for the model. So you see here I'm just uh, picking certain areas to shade, doing some light coats on certain parts and going in a bit heavier where I want it to stand out a little more. So you can't really follow the panel lines on a model this small, but I'm just giving the impression of panel lines um, where I think it would stand out the best. And so here, going back in, darkening those up. Right, onto the first coat of uh, the base colour essentially, and what this is, is a mix of grey, white and cream. I wanted these sort of warm uh, undertones for these models, and uh, so it's probably about four parts uh, white, two parts grey and one part cream. So spraying that on very thinly, just making sure that th that shading can still stand out. Okay, so once that initial coat is on, I'll go back in um, very finely, um, picking out certain panels to highlight. So on the wings, um, certain areas I will um, give a thicker coat of that undercolour and um, make sure that uh, the shading stands out a little more. This requires a lot of patience and also a light touch on the airbrush which I still don't quite have. So I think in future I'll uh, try and practice to get a little better with the individual panel highlighting. Okay, 
so now that's done, we can uh, move on to the next stage, which is going to be a sort of general uh, overspray of a cool white colour. This is kind of to help unify um, those shadows and highlights um, and to sort of bring them both down into a uniform colour, but still visible. Um, the purpose of the cool um, tone of the white is to leave uh, some of that warmer under um, coat in some areas but in uh, sort of like the raised areas you'll be able to um, see a more uh, cool tone of white it just gives a bit of interest to the model okay so now masking up in order to do the red panels so we used a mixture of uh, a yellow and a red probably about two to one uh, maybe three to one And so what we're doing here is just um, very carefully brushing in those red stripes on the side. The kit does come with stickers for those, but the stickers are quite thick and um, quite difficult to push down into all the um, panel lines and um, show the raised detail on the X-Wing as well. So personally, um, I preferred to paint these on. The only bits I used the stickers for were these squadron markings, which we'll come to in a moment. Now, if you're using a paintbrush, uh, a mask isn't strictly necessary. I used it to sort of guide myself and make sure that I was um, getting the correct areas filled in with the red. Um, it also doesn't give the neatest line in the world because obviously the paint's going on a little thicker than it would if it was an airbrush. So it does bleed under, but you can just correct that by going back in with some of that um, white undercoat. So just making sure we're going up to the correct point by looking at those colour charts from the box set, but also um, that I found online. Okay, so the red markings are done on the nose for both Luke and Wedge. And what I'm doing now, Wedge has um, a couple of uh, red stripes on the top of his uh, top engines. So I'm just going in very finely and trying to get those uh, red rings into place. Again, if you mess up, just go back in with the original white colour. Um, it might take a couple of coats to cover the red, but uh, you'll get there. Okay, so now all the individual colour panels have been painted on the X-Wings, and so I'm going to stick the uh, squadron markings onto them. So you can see Wedge has a lot of yellow on his X-Wing and uh, I, I really love the, the paint scheme of Red 2. Um, it's quite simplistic but uh, I think the yellow and the red and the, uh, the subtle greys really um, stand out. Okay, so just laying the sticker on, making sure it's in the right position then rubbing it down with uh, both my thumb and a pair of tweezers to make sure that it's getting into all the nooks and crannies of the wing. Because we don't want to lose, even though the wing doesn't have as much detail as the body, we still don't want to lose that. So again, rubbing it down with finger first and then uh, going in with the tweezers, making sure it's getting into all those uh, recess panels and raised areas. Both X-Wings have their stickers on. Uh, I'm going to go in with a dry brush because you'll notice in the film uh, the colour panels really don't stand out that much and that's because ILM love to uh, sort of dust their models down and make them look really uh, faded and also under the harsh lights of the, uh, the studio um, those colours don't come up at all. So what I'm going to do to try and replicate that is give the coloured panels a, um, a dusting of a, a white um, sort of uh, off-white colour um, just to bring them down a little bit. I'm going to avoid doing this sort of red so much because obviously in the films you can clearly see the red colours, um, probably because it's a stronger colour than the yellows. Um, and so I'm going to avoid doing too much dry brushing on the red panels. So we'll just go through and get those dusted down.
So once you're happy with uh, how muted those colors have got, you will be able to move on to the next stage, which is before applying our wash, we're gonna want to um, put a varnish onto our models. A lot of people use gloss varnish for this stage because it helps the wash sort of run into the recesses of the model. I wanted the wash to stain um, the surface area of the model a little bit, so I went with a satin. Uh, now a matte would um, definitely pick up a lot of that wash colour, but a satin um, will hopefully allow us to remove some of that colour afterwards. And with our wash we're going with uh, a, a mixture of black and sepia a couple of drops of sepia to quite a few drops of black and a lot of water added in so it doesn't stain too much and what we're going to do with this is just sort of run it all over the model and really smother it in this wash with a larger model i'd be a little more um, cautious about where i'm applying this i'd sort of stick to the panel lines and the uh, recessed areas however with a model this small um, you really can just go to town on it and throw the wash all over and because it's quite watered down, it will naturally flow into those panel lines. And so you can see here, it's really starting to bring out the detail of the model. So just going over the whole model, giving it a light coat of the wash. Um, the areas that I want to be particularly dark, uh, such as like under the wings and um, around the engines, I might give a couple of coats of the wash just to make sure that um, it's uh, definitely adhering to that surface. And then it's just a waiting game of for the wash to dry in winter, which uh, takes quite a long time. Don't you love looking at an unfocused image of an X-Wing? There we go. All right, so um, what I've done with Wedge is I've gone back in and I've used a very lightly damp um, piece of cloth and wiped away the wash from the majority of the surfaces. What that does is it leaves it in the recessed areas, such as the panel lines, and um, takes it away from the raised surfaces. So I'll just show you with Luke here. So very damp cloth, and it's sort of reactivating that wash, but also taking it away. And um, because it's only slightly damp, it's leaving it in the panel lines and certain areas of the model, but taking it away from the flat surfaces. And that's exactly um, the kind of effect I wanted. I didn't want it all to be grimy, well, that grimy anyway. And so very carefully, just going through with that cloth and wiping it away. Okay, so now that process is finished. Some areas are harder to reach, so I'll use a Q-tip to get into them. Right, then we're going to go back to dry brushing. Remember, with dry brushing, you want as much paint off of the paintbrush as possible. You're just sort of dusting um, a very fine layer of paint onto it. And what this is going to do is it's going to bring back some of the raised detail that the wash has darkened. And um, also uh, just sort of give it a slightly more weathered look again. Like uh, trying to replicate the ILM models. And it almost uh, makes it look a little more airbrushed. But I am not that skilled with an airbrush, so uh, I will be sticking to this method for now. So again, trying to stay away from those red panels, um, but bringing those uh, white ones back up to a white color rather than gray, and subduing the yellow and grays and blues. So we can see we've got that sort of dusty uh, 
weathered effect now. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to um, apply some pigment powder. And um, what this is, is essentially a, a very um, powdery uh, substance that you can get from pastels. Um, or you can buy uh, weathering powder from companies like Tamiya. Um, personally, I just like using pastels and then throwing a varnish on top of them. And what this will do is create a very sort of dusty, um, burnt effect. And I want that on the engine cans and on um, or in the, the wing recesses. So I'm using a sort of brown charcoal colour here. So I've just got a bit of sandpaper, put a pastel on that so it's ground it up. And then using a very stubby paintbrush that I just cut in half, um, I'm going to apply that to the engine cans and it gives that kind of burnt effect. So you can see the difference between uh, the engine I've done and the engine I'm currently doing. It just sort of um, brings in that kind of burnt look, um, which with paint would it'd look a bit sharp. And so with this powder, it gives a really nice gradient and quite realistic um, sort of soot effect. And uh, again, sort of getting it into the recesses of the wing, really darkening that down. Also put it into the recessed panels in the underwing as well. Um, one of the final steps we're going to do is to give the model a coat of matte varnish. And this will unify all of the different textures that are currently on the model. Um, remember to thin your varnish with thinner if you're putting it through an airbrush. So by unifying, I mean we've got uh, probably some satin varnish still on show from the previous coat we did. We've got the, the paints have different textures. Um, the weathering powder has a different texture as well um, and needs to be sealed, otherwise it's going to rub off. So what this will do is unify all of that and um, bring everything together. And a gloss varnish. So what we're going to do with a gloss varnish is hit the cockpit. Now these Bandai kits um, don't come with a translucent cockpit, unfortunately. Uh, so I've just painted that black and then I'm giving it a gloss varnish to sort of make it stand out from the rest of the model and give the illusion of glass. I believe there are third party kits you can get for translucent cockpits, but um, for this purpose I just went with the one that came in the kit. So this is the uh, lighting on the X-Wing, I think it's come out great. Um, I don't think I could be any happier with that. And all three of them in formation, ready to make the trench run. So that's going to do it for this video. I'll see you in the next one when we tackle the actual diorama itself. And uh, yeah, I hope you watch that too.